let me introduce, uh, hopefully that we get some love today from South Korea. And uh, my guest here is uh, a curator, uh, actually an old friend from, uh, now old friend, uh, from South Korea. She, uh, she works at, the, uh, she, she's a curator at the Museum, National Museum of Contemporary, uh, Modern and Contemporary Art, MMCA, shortly probably the most important uh, museum of art in, in Korea. And uh, she's going to talk about her project called Watch and Chill. It's uh, a subscription-based streaming platform for contemporary art that she developed at the MMCA. It was a three-year project and uh, which combines online experience at its core uh, and experimenting with uh, uh, synchronizing uh, virtual online with the real physical exhibition that is traditional in uh, museums. The project started during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and it was uh, gained a lot of uh, sympathetic attention from other curators and museums around the world. So it would be uh, and has already uh, traveled extensively uh, as uh, this watch and chill. And over the course of three years that it has uh, uh, collaborated with eight museums in Asia, Middle East, Europe, and America, and Oceania, Oceania during the time the meaning and tendency of the usage of streaming platform have shifted greatly. The project proved the possibility of international co co collaboration with commitment, curiosity, and trust using only video calls and internet. And so she will uh, talk about that, her experience of, of producing and curating that. Yi Ji Hui or Ji Hui Li is a curator at, again at MMCA uh, since 2017. Previously, she worked with me on a project called Imagining New Eurasia for two years. At MMCA, she uh, uh, have done a number of uh, exhibitions, of course, besides the one that I just mentioned. Uh, she also curated Hyundai, Hyundai Motor Series 2020 uh, with uh, exhibition by Hegyu Young, perhaps the today the one of the most I mean certainly one of the most important, arguably perhaps even the most important uh, artist in South Korea, and uh, and also architecture and heritage unearthing unearthing future in 2019 and organized Essential Duchamp exhibition in 2018 with the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which has probably one of the best collection of Duchamp's work, and curated both retrospective screening program at, at Becca and Le Monde uh, through the lens of domesticity in 2018 and superhumanity post-labor psychopathology plasticity a symposium and a publication project with Eflux Architecture in 2017, which is uh, uh, online uh, publication, prominent. Previously, she curated uh, Imagine New Eurasia three-year projects with myself, I already mentioned that, and at the Asia Cultural Center in Guangzhou. Uh, she was a, uh, uh, also a deputy curator and managing director for the Korean Pavilion at the 2014 in Venice Architecture uh, Biennial, which won the Golden Lion, which is the prize for the best exhibition. She received Bachelor of Art, Bachelor of Art in Fine Arts in Studio Practice and Contemporary Critical Studies from the Goldsmith uh, in London and Master uh, of Science in Critical curatorial and conceptual practice in architecture at Graduate Center for Architecture and I don't know what PP stands for, but that's in Columbia University 
in New York. So I welcome Ji Hui Li. Thank you, Kyung. Sorry for a very like mouthful name, program names <laughs> in my um, education. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to thank Kyung Park uh, for first and foremost, um, and everybody who's involved in the making um, this lecture series happened. Uh, and I am incredibly honored to be able to be part of this, um, given the fact that Kyung Park uh, really is a legendary figure in the world of curatorial practice in architecture. Um, I remember reading his manifesto for Stowe Forum for Art and Architecture um, back in my graduate school at the Columbia University, and I was yeah, really inspired by the enthusiasm that he had put on to create this, the institutions that never existed before. And I was like very happily surprised that he was Korean later. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and also had a privilege to work with him um, and discover this really amazing project that he did at the Soul Fund and um, had the opportunity to introduce that to the Venice Bi Architecture Biennial uh, Korean Pavilion. And, you know, he really contributed to that golden lion. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, so yeah, ever since then, we have been putting up good relations and uh, yeah, a lot of camaraderies happening. Uh, so yeah, huge thank you to your professor, Kim Park. So um, let me share the screen. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about watch and chill streaming platform as Kim Park um, mentioned. Uh, so this streaming service was operated by the National Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art since um, 2021, so I've been running uh, for three years now, and uh, it shares, um, and, and by talking about this, I want to share the example of how this online space has led to collaborating, collaboration among international art institutions. Um, in early 2021, when the project was conceived, Art museums were contemplating ways to respond to the changing situation amid prolonged um, COVID regulations. Watch and Chill started with a simple question. Can we appreciate the art museum's collection at home? Um, avoiding the pandemic, our living space has become a place of rest and a place for telecommuting at the same time. The extremely private and intimate setting of a home has turned into a public meeting room, lecture room, playroom, and broadcasting studio, thanks to Zoom and other virtual media. And there's, and we are still doing Zoom now. <laughs> um, so architecture historian Beatrice Clovina has already said that our cities are gradually um, coming to bed. Uh, she that she said this before way before COVID nineteen. Of course, they were there are artists who presented the daily life of a current um, situation, like back in the seventies as well. So here um, you see uh, John Lennon and Okoyono's bad piece uh, is an example of transforming the most private place into a political space by inviting reporters from various media to the bedroom and to broadcast love and peace uh, out to the world. And probably this is what you need given the time and you know what Kyung had mentioned. Uh, another example is a Playboy founder, Hugh Hefner, uh, who um, in the 1960s, he renovated his home to create an environment in which he could run an entire empire, like global, this his global empire of Playboy without leaving his home. So this like intense living space, like pretty much his bedroom um, is reminiscent of the function of a house today where um, the idea of domestic, uh, domestic connectivity is maximized due to today's media environment. Um, 
So streaming platforms such as Netflix and Watcha um, has been benefited from the increased time spent at home due to the pandemic. And when Watcha just started, um, um, these two OTT services were the main pillars, um, but now you have like periods of streaming services, various platforms that are trying to occupy the streaming market competitively, um, enough to be called the era of the OTT battlefield. So even in 2020, even until 2021, there was a limit uh, to the number of people um, looking for theaters or exhibitions. So streaming-based uh, viewing methods such as online film festivals were uh, being attempted. Uh, the Watch and Show platform created an opportunity for the museums to reconsider the framework of a museum exhibitions while actively responding to these changing behaviors of the audiences and their relation to the digital media. So this is how it looks like. Um, this was the first launch of the season one, Watch and Chill. And um, I'm not sure how you, this appears to you. Um, and we were kind of referencing a lot uh, the aesthetic of Netflix, but kind of tweaking it with this kind of like funny name. Um, really kind of get the attention of like, hey, we are here and we want to stream contemporary artwork instead of any other medium. And we are very specific to that goal and to share the museum collections. And you can put your email here to subscribe. And every day, every week, there's new video work that are streamed to you. So you'll be like, stay on this platform. So we were very much kind of learning from the methodology of like how the streaming services operated. And it was not only the MMCA that we wanted to share uh, our collection, but we we're basically given this budget from the government since we are the institution directly under the Ministry of Culture um, to do a sort of a global exchange project called Art Hanyu. It's like, a, it's a kind of thing for Korean way where like you can tell like BTS or, you know, the movie Parasites, all this kind of pop culture of Korean entertainment industry was kind of booming uh, last couple of years. And, um, and the Minister of Culture also wanted to do something like Art Han Ryu um, to, yeah, like the ne next contemporary artist for that is, that is kind of comparable to BTS or something like that, given the fact that this is kind of like almost impossible task. But um, I wanted to take this opportunity to not only work with like just delivering Korean art, but to have this, you know, like digital platform as a way to have like a shared experience among other museums. So for me, the reason why the like a lot of K-pop group were famous and became so widespread is due to, you know, the older streaming platform that people started to not just kind of receive it, but also produce their own um, contents and, and therefore became really this playground for people to like enjoy making and receiving at the same time. It's like all really reciprocal um, experience. So, like the real art Hanyu could be that, you know, this platform to be this playgrounds for other museums to chip in with their museum collections and also um, the artists work from their own local art communities. So, and I really wanted to start that in Asia. So I reached out to my friends, uh, colleagues uh, in Asian museums. So Jose Lina Cruz from, uh, the Philippines, Manila, there's an institution called Museum of uh, Contemporary Art and Design. She's director and curator there, and also uh, Kima Choi Prasit uh, in Thailand, uh, Chiang Mai. There's a museum, private museum called uh, Mayam Contemporary Art um, Museum. And um, probably all you're, you're familiar with Hong Kong's M Plus. Uh, there's a film curator called uh, Silke Schmeckel. So among four of us, four women um, in Asia, we created this really the structure of uh, how this could work together. We kind of called up the idea of um, domestic connectivity as a kind of first subject matter that we wanted to touch upon. 
because um, this that's precisely as I was speaking um, the the focal point of like inquiry from the very onset of the inception of the project. So it made sense for us to talk about home and how the home became meta home. And so, yeah, so there are four sub subtopics that were um, under the, the main topic of domestic connectivity and the title was Watch and Chill Streaming Art to Your Homes. And this is one of the subchapter meta home. And this is how you could watch it at home or like on your phone, like when you're commuting or on the bus, wherever you want um, to, to watch this really incredible uh, media artwork um, through our platform. The way that I also wanted to create was um, uh, a way to cre um, make some kind of a feedback loop um, that are not necessarily about like one way. So if you look at this video work, it's gonna be just one-to-one -one experience. So you have a video work that are streamed at you and then you are watching at it. And so, so there's only like one direction, um, but like for instance, in the YouTube, you have like comments <laughs> and that's where people like really make a community out of it. Um, but there's a danger to opening up to the general audience. <laughs> so what we did instead is to commission comments. So the comments that are extremely long. So um, we commissioned text uh, to uh, novelists, uh, poet, and um, contemporary artists, curators, and other like sociologists and other scholarly figures, whoever, yeah, writers, um, to have like re relatively lengthy comment and sort of their journal uh, as to experiencing this platform and like how they how they thought. So this is one way of kind of to to mimic the crowd dynamics in an exhibition space. Let's say like if you go to an exhibition, like you watch a video work um, and you sit down there and you start to feel like uh, you want to leave, but then there's somebody else who's like still watching it. So it seems like you have to stay there for a while or something. So like, and if there's like a place where a lot of people are gathering, then it's, it might be interesting. You want to go there too. So like this kind of text commission, which I call the Tales I Tell, as a kind of satellite project to be pop up in the platform so that you have this kind of like feedback loop created. This is kind of the statistics of the first season. Um, and we pretty much covered the like entire globe. <laughs> I mean, the exception of like few spots. Uh, um, and yeah, this is kind of the limit to this platform where like, you know, you can only get access to this if you have a very good internet connection. So. So yeah, we cannot overcome that kind of economic and infrastructural challenge. Um, but um, to see one side of it is that like, I was very surprised that there's 68.6% .6 of the users were using mobile phone. Um, this was quite the opposite of what I saw. Cause, Cause for me as a curator, when I watch a video work that I would prefer to watch in a larger scale or in this like a uh, projection uh, kind of uh, setting or theatrical setting. So I thought people would do the same in their home, but like, no, they kind of chose the mobility rather um, rather than the quality somehow. And oh yeah, so in a way um, it was important uh, for me to um, have the hybrid experience between on and offline um, because we cannot get away from the physicality of the museum. Like, um, and as you said, uh, as you saw uh, in the in the in the map, where um, not everybody is connected to the internet. So to have some kind of physical place uh, was a necessity in certain extent. And because we were collaborating with four different museums, um, we had the opportunity to showcase it in uh, four different. Uh, in museums in their physical spaces. But I take this as a kind of um, 
So I wanted to kind of shift the hierarchy between what is online and what is offline, because normally if you, um, there are many exhibitions nowadays that have an online component to it. There is a kind of, you know, website they create uh, for the purpose of an exhibition uh, for a short period of time. Uh, but it seems like it's kind of like addendum to the the exhibition that the physical exhibitions that are really the main thing. But for Watch and Chill, it was quite the opposite. So the online experience is really the full completed experience, and the offline is really the pop up store of 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 that experience. So uh, I, I took the offline exhibition as a kind of uh, an advertisement or uh, a place where you can get more subscribers. And to do that, you need to be extremely charming. <laughs> um, and I was imagining um, um, uh, things like this where, you know, you're kind of, um, they're like architects in the seventies where your um, body is in rock with this kind of media screen and you don't have to move anywhere. Um, but spatially, um, the media environment kind of enwrap you. Or like Dillis Cofidio's like media home, where um, the whole space is configured um, uh, to 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 create the specific media environment with the with the devices then that that stream it. So that this is how the physical exhibition looked like in the first season. Um, we had this very kind of prominent button looking like all kind of like a uh, chat bubble looked like um, a shapes that were like prominently um, displayed um, colorfully in the exhibition space. And we worked with an architect called uh, Farming Architecture, uh, Korean architect Choi Jang Won to like not necessarily uh, to create to mimic to mimic the home environment that as we know of, but kind of um, borrowing some formality from the ho house objects or household environment to implement them some kind of um, hint uh, or uh, abstract formations to have some kind of sensibility of a domestic space, but not necessarily um, um, limited to it. So like the house blinds or, um, or this kind of like mirror effect uh, to, to, to mimic the windows. So um, in, in, in this kind of environment uh, that you would imagine some kind of like a future home where your home is sort of surrounded with the media um, devices. And it traveled to um, Manila in the Philippines in that museum, uh, like the Philippine was like hit really hard by the pandemic. A lot of people die, uh, died um, and all the like public places were completely shut down. So the, what they did is they created this like um, drive-in, drive-through cinema <laughs> uh, where the old contents of the watch and chill was streamed um, over a number of period of time and everybody could watch it from their car through their FM radio. This, yeah, and there are some outdoor audiences. And then uh, at Chiang Mai in the Thailand, they created this structure that are reminiscent of the um, farming architecture's um, first installation at the MMCA. Um, and they used it continuously even after the, uh, the Watch and Chill program to showcase the uh, young artists uh, films here. So it somehow has some kind of remaining impact at this. Yeah, so they, yeah, it was really nice environment at this uh, home, yeah, tropical Thailand. And also at the M plus and the, the, this M plus museum is really ambitious and they claim to be the biggest museum in Asia, but then it was, it has to be closed due to pandemic. So they had this kind of special occasion to, uh, opening up this media tech uh, to uh, to yeah like test out our watch and show program as in their media tech so you can browse all the works there and we also did like a conversation series to talk about the digital strategies among the museums uh, when everybody was literally panicked and uh, and it was great success and we were lucky enough to uh, come back to the second season. Um, and in the second season, uh, we, we called it a streaming census. 
Um, the reason why the domestic connectivity was possible is uh, obviously through the digital media. And I was curious as to like what, how people share their um, bodily sensation um, transmitted, transmitted through the digital means, especially like beyond the digital screens. And with that subject, we like, collaborated with Sharjah uh, Foundation, uh, the one and only princess, uh, Hora Akasimi, and um, uh, in Sweden's uh, Arctis uh, in Stockholm uh, with curator James Taylor Foster. So this is how you look like. It's kind of similar, but we kind of completely redesigned the whole uh, platform to be specific to the subject matter. And there, are, yeah, and then this is how you look like in the streaming platform. And also, yeah, again, we did um, um, uh, commission to the scholars of the, of the visual cultures. And you can see kind of like uh, Arabic subtitles, all the works were subtitled in Arabic uh, for Sharjah. So we've been running this for two, season for over two years so we have the kind of like accumulated data and um uh we have like um uh 530 more than 530 views and we have active users across 102 countries um now we have more than 10,000 uh subscribers um so yeah i mean like more than 50 percent has increased in terms of new subscribers and people have been staying in our platform uh, four minutes more than the first season. And um, so this is how it looked like in the second season at the exhibition space. In this exhibition, we collaborate with Pare, a uh, Korean architect. You, probably he already had a lecture here. Um, and what was important for us is that like, you know, um, uh, like how do we create the, the idea of tactility uh, in the physical space because you could and and also they were very much involved in and in, been proactive in in the during the pandemic to you know deal with the situation um, in an architectural language um, and this work that they did uh, to build this uh, pneumatic uh, building a uh, hospital building annex was so inspiring um, for its function and also the technical aspects. Uh, also the, the the very tactility of this kind of uh, pneumatic structure. So I asked them to kind of join in to create a physical space, the medial environment uh, in the exhibition space. And they very much um, agreed to this and created this fantastical um, landscape using this modular structures uh, that could become bench, uh, little stools and, and yeah, like um, um, air mount in between uh, digital screens. And uh, as much as the tactility was important, uh, it was possible because the COVID measure was started to be eased up a little bit. So we did a lot of like public programs. Um, we invited uh, very, very famous uh, Korean ASMR artists to do like a silence disco in the, in the gallery space. Everybody would like um, lay down in a, in, yeah, in a museum uh, to feel uh, ear orgasms. <laughs> and, um, and also we did a, a conversation with neuroscientists and artists to talk about um, like what actually happens to our brain when we transmit our senses uh, through the digital means. And the travel to Sharjah um, at the um, uh, uh, Almeraja uh, art space. Um, and you can see like burqa worn, traditional uh, costume worn uh, audience in, in, in the United Arab Emirates. Um, yeah, more photos. And also it went to Octus in Sweden and you can see body structures still installed there. And we uh, there they provided popcorns uh, for the screenings to kind of draw the map of like how it expanded in the Asia in, in the first season to second season to the third season. Obviously we cannot cover the entire globe, but we were very kind of mindful of like where we reach out to be able to kind of start, spread, spread out our kind of in, influence kind of evenly matter if possible. And we came back with the third season. We just opened last week. So 
um, you can go to the watchandchill.kr slash en and you'll be able to really experience the platform, the third season of Watch and Chill platform title streaming suspense. And um, the reason why I kind of chose this, up, uh, this topic was because in the end of the day, it's like, um, um, it is a matter of like, how do we occupy our mind and space um, in this time of like a myriad of video contents, like you wake up with YouTube, you go to sleep with Netflix and how do we occupy the minds of our audience um, and, and, um, and how the, like where is the space for contemporary art to exist? And uh, for me, there is a value and, um, a very specific strategies for the artists that uh, that artists employ, which is um, the method of storytelling and image making, and through that there's uh, there there are people, really brilliant artists, uh, designers, and filmmakers, uh, who's using the method of uh, suspense uh, to to draw attention to the the topics uh, various topics that are relevant. Um, in that, um, so I'll go deeper there. And uh, for the th uh, third season, I collaborate with uh, Samantha Alzer of Tono Festival in Mexico City, which just opened yesterday. And uh, the Trevor Smith of uh, Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. And the Timothy Moore of National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, um, Australia. So this is how the, uh, platform looks like when you go in. Um, and uh, after learning that we have like way more audience uh, using mobile devices, we kind of designed specifically for the uh, mobile users, but obviously you can watch it from your laptop as well. And if you go in, um, you can also go to like different subtopics. Uh, and also you can watch a video work and the right two images are the Kwon Han Yun's uh, 489 years. And in the exhibition space, you can only watch it through the VR devices, but from your home, it's a 360 video. So you can actually like move around with your devices to really experience through your screen. And um, yeah, there's this kind of like irritating bot that are like constantly talking to you um, and you can always ignore them, but um, we kind of put, implemented this as a kind of a critique of like AI occupying our space, but also like, um, yeah, like a critique of the OTT service where like, you know, you can just watching the services like OTT, like numbing yourself, um, um, just kind of like, give you the zooming zone out moments, um, but like this kind of trigger gets you and and there's like a very specific storyline uh, for like, yeah, sinister, um, sinisterly mood. Yeah, I mean, you you experience it. Um, so yeah, in this chapter, in this season, we collaborate with our Puhahaha friends, <laughs> um, uh, this architect who happened to, uh, designed the headquarter of Hybe, which is the uh, company for behind the BTS. Um, and they're just like this crazy geniuses um, um, who work so brilliantly with um, uh, our, our contents and they created this brilliant space of suspense. You'll watch it later. So this is how it looks like in the entry. Um, after two successful seasons, we promoted to the larger gallery space. Um, and this is how you enter the exhibition space. And this is very kind of like labyrinth in like uh, exhibition space. And actually this is the entire, like the first gallery space. And you have to go into all the way to the, almost to the end of the exhibition space to start the first chapter and the reason for this is because like a lot of studies says like the idea of suspense, the sensation of suspense were created when the information is delayed and that you, it's kind of like constantly fleeing from you and you like fall into this complete um, sense of imbalance. And that's the kind of sensations that we wanted to create there. And so this is exhibition view. Um, do we have a moment? Um, 
yeah, so the since it's just open, I'm going to talk very briefly about the, each subtopic. And the first chapter is about is called Landscape Under Moonlight, where I talk about the, the, the pretty much the idea of like uncanny valley in a kind of like literary sense of like actual landscape. Um, yeah, and we have like um, Nick Hamilton, this Australian uh, designer who created this like hyper-realistic renderings of uh, our domestic space that are inflamed. And um, also you, in the in the girl space, you have a VR devices that you can actually walk through the demilitarized zone uh, followed follow by a story. Um, and yeah, and then uh, it's the next chapter. Yeah, you get to the next chapter. Um, in the next chapter, reassembly of evidence is the uh, this next chapter, and you here you have um, the artist Chung Jae Kyung, who's your alumni, is a graduate, um, the PhD student under Kyung Park, <laughs> and I really want. I was very happy to include him because um, this chapter was like entirely inspired by him, um, where he uh, basically reenacted the Dostoevsky's uh, punish, uh, crime and punishment one scene of double murder and to really talk about how in the visual art we have been visualizing the idea of evil and 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 criminality and uh, so yeah like this is how it is installed um, and I really love this corridor and when you go to an exhibition space you're like bombarded with this just myriad of images and your eyes get super tired so to having this kind of corridor to like cleanse your eyes is very helpful. And then in the middle of it, you have this kind of eerie office space looking place. And I take this kind of like a liminal space or back rooms where like you're kind of stuck in this room um, with these computers. But really what it does is that uh, it's a kind of uh, advertisement room <laughs> for subscribers uh, to, that you can actually go here to subscribe to our channel to our platform and then um, you go to the third chapter uh, which I called mutable corpus the idea of mutations the, the terminology of mutations it's like really haunted us over the you know the period of COVID and we're here I talk about like different scales of mutations that happen in our bodies and the you know the fearfulness challenges and also the possibilities uh, that it creates uh, Song Sang Yi's beautiful work called uh, Come Back Alive Baby. Um, yeah, and then you go to the next chapter uh, called The Performance of the Undead, uh, where I talk about the undead, like those who are familiar with gaming world, uh, the undead is like zombies or like living corpus. And they basically defy the normative temporality and therefore it's connected to the idea of queer, narrative and so here's a lot of artists um performers um who's like really uh performing their liberation from the normative life cycles um yeah like a lot of undead here and uh and then and then the last chapter is called this post dystopian world building um here it's an inquiry about like like why artists make and produce so many dystopian imageries. And one way of reading it is that um, it is to imagine the worst case scenario and to imagine like what is what would be the possible uh, worlding that artists can imagine uh, through that. Um, so yeah, this is the end of the exhibition. And we have really amazing programs lined up. Um, the Taegyung Jung, uh, who I just introduced, will have uh, actual live theater um, that will be performed on the June 9th. And also we have like conversation series. Like one of it is that I literally called up all curators who participated in Watch and Chill um, to MMCA um, because we like ended our pandemic. And so we're gonna talk about like what we had done <laughs> over the three years. And uh, everything uh, will be recorded and be streaming online. So you can stay tuned to our MMCA YouTube channel. And, um, and it's gonna travel to the US. Uh, so in November, it's gonna go to the Peabody Essex. So if you happen to travel to the East Coast, you can have a glance, uh, chance, uh, yeah, glance of it. And then, yeah, uh, so do I have time? 
Um, I prepared like a final remark, but I just kind of go really quickly that, um, you know, throughout this three hour, three years period, like it was a good attempt to uh, overcome and, and, and a kind of method of breakthrough the kind of challenging situations of the museum, but it happened to be that the kind of learning that we have done, all the, you know, like uh, good things, like the good method of communications that we have learned uh, throughout pandemic has been very helpful and useful. And we wanted to kind of keep continue to experiment with that, uh, with the new framework of exhibition making, especially so with like, not like a single author curatorial practice, but also, um, you know, like, um, me as a kind of initiator of like the framework and and uh, for other curators to chip in. So I call this as a kind of decentralized curatorial practice. And I'm, I'm very much interested in the idea of like, yeah, like opening up this conversation. Um, yeah, and hopefully we can talk about it more in the conversation series that's gonna coming up. So yeah, that's really it for the, my lecture. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and there's a video that um, maybe I'll stop sharing and you can share. Yeah, it's like a little promo video that we made. Um, super raw video, um, super low budget video. <laughs> um, so Thank you. Uh, anybody have questions? Of course, you always have questions. You want to take, let me take the microphone to you. If we want to learn more about this ourselves, would we like just subsume, like register on the website and then look on it, or like do we pay, yeah. or what would be the process for that? Yeah, you can you can register, um, and then you will receive an email to confirm your IP address, and um, then you're free to watch. Exciting. And every week there'll be new video that'll be releasing. Right now there's I think six videos up. Uh, every Friday, 4 p.m. in Korea time, new videos are uploaded. Any other questions? Are the, um, is the art that's on like this digital exhibition also the same as things that already exist inside the other museums or is it all like specially made for the specific, I guess, streaming media? Um, so it varies, um, but really from the, the the kind of beginning idea is that to share art collections from each museum. So the, the artwork that were purchased by each museum and so it's in their uh, basically digital storage, right? Um, and yeah, the idea was really to mobilize that um, because, you know, even though the museum was closed, like you still have this very fairly easily transferable digital data that are like sitting in your museum storage in the hard drive. Um, so this was like really to kind of mobilize that um, because we can. And, um, and on top of that, there are, you know, depending on the artist, but some artists were completely open-minded, but some artists, they were a little bit um, cautious. Um, so like some artists, they had like edited version streamed online or some artists even went further so that they actually made I mean there's a actual video that are streaming but also they also want to make a special version like for instance there's uh, this artist called Song Sang Yi who's now um, I think that's going to be in June um, uh, is creating an, an ebook uh, specifically for this platform and um, a Siren Eun Young Jong this amazing Korean queer artist who is making this kind of non-linear narrative that are only exists in the web version. So yeah, artists are really taking this chance to expand um, uh, their, their practice to me like new types of audience. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. I think it's because maybe I, I could ask a question that, that one artist that you mentioned changed different formats, right? So it, it's probably related to that in the museum and in the online, whether it's the phone or on the tablet or 
or a laptop, it's a different kind of condition in terms of physical size and space. But probably more important is that uh, the kind of space that you're in with a mobile as opposed to in the museum or a laptop, or even what times, what kind of time that you're spending, the time that you're moving on a train or you're sitting in a lounge or you're sitting at home on your, let's say, comfortable couch. And you have a different kind of a spatial experience, contextual experience that matches with the images, right? So I suppose some artists recognize that and kind of reformat that, you know, like, you know, in terms of size, the length, and also maybe even uh, alter the content somewhat in order to better fit the environment. Is that something that you noticed? Yeah, uh, precisely. Like artists? for instance, Song Sang-hye's work is originally three channel and it's impossible to watch three channel video in like this tiny <laughs> screen. So um, she added it to two channel videos um, that are kind of befitted exactly into two, um, this size. So instead of like 16 by nine, um, she did it like uh, four by three in two channels. So it's gonna be fit exactly into the format of mobile phone, um, which I thought was brilliant. And um, yeah, things like that. I should, I noticed that in the uh, the third show of Watch and Chill, you were, because of lack of time, you were just showing some images of most of the uh, film video works, right? And uh, because it was in Korean, maybe people couldn't understand. But there, it, let's say if there was one image, there was five or six different pictures, right? I think each one of it is from different artists. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. And then are they from different uh, uh, museums that collaborated with you? Yeah, exactly. So okay. each museum like uh, presented uh, provided uh, five to six artworks. So we had like six artists work um, from our collection and also so like collect the, the work that like from Korean artists and some Australian artists, some from Tono, Mexico, uh, the US. Uh, yeah, but the country boundary doesn't really matter because it's it means like I said it broadly as a community because even though like some works from um, the Peabody Essex Museum, like he brought like Indian artists and also uh, Israeli, Iranian, Israeli, German artists or things like that. So the country border was kind of blurred, but it really matter is like, you know, like people like, you know, who they bring to, who can, who can they relate to? Typically in a, a museum exhibition that travels around, uh, it's usually made by one museum first who produces exhibition and then it travels to other museum, right? But yeah. in this case, it, is it look like different that, yeah. that you collaborated together, each museum contributed work into the total show yeah and and so uh, the show was put together by all the participating museum is that correct yeah they have their share <laughs> okay uh if there is there any other questions hi thanks so much hi. for that presentation it's great uh, my question is your about is your uh, collaborative process meaning could this were you thinking about a project like this before COVID or is it very time, this temporal moment related and how it changed their collaborative process with different curators from pretty much kind of all over the world? So yeah, I'm curious about that process and whether this was conceived, I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't conceived before COVID um, pandemic, but that this is very COVID pandemic specific. Yeah, I mean, as I said before, it was like, if it wasn't COVID, probably this was not like possible. 
Uh, and like, we didn't know that working at home was this possible before. And I mean, you know, like collaborative process in the museum, in between museums, generally tends to be very heavy. Like you need to like travel, formally meet each other, greet each other, do all the kind of like courtesy thing, like hotels, blah, blah, drinks, like get to know each other. Like all these kind of uh, like, I don't know, like necessary steps were disrupted. And, you know, you don't, you just call up and say, hey, <laughs> what's up, you know? And you just zoom, zoom in and then you can have like multiple people meet each other, like super easy. And so I call this, like sober collaboration, like you don't have to drink, you just meet each other, um, talk about the work, like straightforward. And this was okay to do that. And it was possible to do that. And maybe it's could, it could be about like generation thing also that um, I like, you know, like the curators that I work with, like tend to be like my generation. So like, some kind of like friendship build up was totally possible through digital media. Actually, the thing is, um, I consider like the four curators that I collaborated in the beginning, uh, I consider them as my friends. Like we, we talk constantly, we text each other constantly, but we never met in real life. <laughs> um, and and I, I, I don't think that was possible before COVID. I mean, maybe it could, but like maybe that kind of like trust building was not imaginable before COVID. Yeah, I also, it, I mean, important, I think you mentioned, but it's not only that the technology of communication, right, that works for us. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure that it's, you people are, really the force behind trying to uh, exer exerting a lot of pressure, changing how education is done, right? right? And uh, that's changing also. But it's also because of the idea that, that uh, people are more comfortable uh, staying home and working. The work and the home uh, uh, space time is start to erode they're coming more together. And you have to remember, there's only recently in the few centuries, maybe two or three, maybe even, no, more like two, in human civilization, where we actually separated home from work. Yeah. We used to always, almost everybody worked at home. Work, home and work was in the same space. We didn't have to commute. Right. So a lot of these kind of commuting that made this transportation gave us actually cost us a lot of money and time. No wonder why I was so comfortable. <laughs> right. A lot of cost of putting a show together or any event is flying people and put them up, you know, is huge cost. Yeah. And this is why I'm able to put together a series of this lecture series from people from South Korea because they don't have to come here, right? Anyway, uh, next week uh, we will have uh, Society of Architecture and uh, it's an architecture office and uh, it's uh, 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 leader uh, Yerin Gang. She will present what they're working on currently uh, for the Venice Bi uh, Biennial project about abandoned uh, areas in the city of mid-sized city of Gunsan in South Korea, and how that this could become more of a creative uh, destruction, which is the kind of term, how to use abandonment and decay into some positive, uh, let's say, uh, perspective into the future, okay, and how and the environmental uh, crisis and climate change becomes part of that uh, uh, scenario. Okay, so hope to see you next week. And final thanks to Ji Hui Li. <laughs>